Yeah, I'm an instructional designer here at the Smithsonian, and I'm here with my colleague Ashley Naranjo and Jim Reese from the Washington International School and Ellen Rogers from Belvedere Elementary in Virginia. Today, we're going to continue our series where we model uh, routines from Harvard's Project Zero. These are often done in person, but we're um, spending the series modeling how to do them online because they can also be a really powerful way to engage your students while we're here in this sort of digital learning environment. Well, um, we're going to go ahead, we'll model the routine all the way through and then take general questions at the end. So in the spirit of modeling, we wanted to start with a social emotional opener. So take a minute in the chat and write out what is an activity you're missing during this time of staying at home. So as you're typing in the chat and reading what your colleagues have said, I'm going to pass it over to Ellen and Jim. Jim, do you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Hi, I'm Jim Reese. And, um, and I work at Washington International School, and I run a center for professional development. And I've been working with um, with Ashley above me and with Ellen uh, over, uh, sorry, on this side uh, for a number of years on initiatives that have to do with uh, Project Zero. And so it's really a great pleasure to turn things over to Ellen, who is um, just a wonderful practitioner of Project Zero ideas, incredibly enthusiastic about all that she has learned and shared with um, not only her colleagues, but her students. And we're thrilled to have Belvedere Elementary School represented from Fairfax County Public Schools. It's a great school. Um, they've, they've been incredibly loyal to our network of PZ practitioners. So Ellen, it's all yours. Well, I'm Ellen Rogers. I'm the IB coordinator at um, Belvedere Elementary School, as Jim said. Um, I didn't start my work with Jim as the IB coordinator. I was actually a classroom teacher. I was an advanced academics resource teacher for a while. And now I'm in this role as the IB coordinator, but the PZ um, routines have been a, kind of a really important way for our kids to access inquiry in our classrooms and um, has really pushed the thinking of our teachers at our school. So we're still learning, but it, it's been a really fun journey. Um, so this is my first time digitally walking teachers through this, um, through a routine, but it's certainly not my first time doing it with teachers. So I can't wait to see what everyone has to say today. <laughs> Great. And I'm going um, like, to, oh. I'm, I'm going to introduce, um, I asked Ashley to introduce herself as well, but I also want to say that um, we hope that these, um, this, what we're doing today can be really useful for um, parents at home or caregivers um, and not just teachers. So we hope that um, there'll be a way for everybody to access this information. So Ashley, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Ashley Naranjo, and I am the manager of educator engagement for the Smithsonian Center for Learning and Digital Access in Washington, D.C., and I've had the pleasure of working with all three of these wonderful colleagues. Um, and so for today's session, I'm actually going to be behind the scenes for a little bit, um, and I'll be using the Smithsonian Learning Lab, which is a free digital platform, um, to share some of the resources that we'll look closely at. And then at the end of the session, I'll give you a tour of how you can access those resources as well. So, thanks. So the routine that we're gonna engage in today is called See, Wonder, Connect, or Compare. Um, and so we're gonna kind of do both at that last stage, but we're gonna start with the seeing part. And if you've viewed one of um, these easy peasy um, videos before, you might have seen Jim and some other educators walk you through this idea of taking your time and really doing some slow looking. And so that's where we're going to start with today. So we're going to start with this first artifact. And if you we're going to start by just looking at the overall artifact, trying to notice what we might see. It could be images, colors, shapes. And then we're going to start, now that we've kind of started notes, and we're going to start at the top. So we're going to zoom into the top of this artifact and really try to, now that we get a closer look, kind of take a look and see if there are now some more defined colors, shapes, symbols, and even words that we might be able to see. Some of the shapes, colors, and symbols might even be familiar to us. We might recognize them, um, things that we've seen before. It might remind us of something else.
Now that we've had a chance to look a little bit, Jim, is there anything that you either see or wonder that you want to talk about? Sure. Just um, several things that caught my attention. I was looking mainly at things that um, felt familiar to me. And so, first of all, it, it looks like a vest. So it looks like this um, white vest. Um, I noticed um, on the right hand um, corner near the shoulder that there's um, what looks like um, a pin that re these look like a lot of pins that are pinned to the vest. And it looks like a pin that has to do with wings. And I remember I had my, I had a, my, when I was a child, my dad had a friend who was a pilot for Eastern mm -hmm. Airlines, which no longer exists. And it looks like the kind of thing he wore um, as a pilot. So it made me wonder about um, what that's representing. Um, I also saw um, American flags represented in the left-hand corner. So I see a flag sort of by itself as a pin, but then just beneath it, a couple of um, rows down, there are flags that have what looks like a V behind it in, um, in the background. So I, that, that um, drew my attention as well. I, also, I saw in the comment section, somebody had noticed the Olympic symbol and I saw that in one of the pens. Um, and I saw um, Atlanta written upside down on a pen toward the bottom. Um, and I saw the NBC peacock symbol yeah. as well. So those are just some of the things that I was noticing. We've had a number of people who also noticed that there are different state pins as well as um, the of the country and a couple other Olympics or special Olympics. Um, and one person said this, uh, this person travels a lot. <laughs> so we are already starting to notice. I was also even just noticing um, myself as I'm looking at it, that some colors and some pins tend to stand out based on their color or, or the simplicity of the symbol, which is kind of interesting to notice both far, far away and up close. Um, especially those red pins that kind of draw your eye. So that's makes for a really interesting. So we've really started to focus and it seems like some are just symbols, but I also see some that combine symbols, words and images. So mm -hmm. we're certainly getting a lot of um, opportunities to kind of also move our thinking into wondering as we're looking at uh, the different colors and symbols and images that we see. So now that we've looked at this artifact, we're actually gonna move on to another artifact and we're gonna take another slow look. We're gonna take in the image overall first. So when we look at it without zooming in, we're both taking in the foreground and the background at the same time, making sure our eyes glance over from left to right. And then as we kind of taken and start seeing and noticing. So this is obviously a black and white photo, so we're not gonna take in the color, but we're certainly gonna be taking in shade and shadow. We're also gonna be looking at lines and details. So we're gonna go ahead and focus on um, the person in the foreground. So what we might notice about them. So we'll zoom in a little bit and take a look at the person in the foreground. And We'll take a look and see. We might notice both what they're wearing, their gesture, the way they're standing, their position in the picture. We might even zoom in. We can zoom in towards the right and look at additional people that are standing in the photo. We might notice where they're looking, their gestures, their clothing, what they might be doing or noticing and looking. Now as true investigators, we're gonna take a look at the background. So the trick with photographs is they can only be zoomed in so much. So it might be a bit blurry as we zoom in, but we still might be able to get some real details. So we're gonna take a closer look at the background So now that we've really taken in this picture, both 
as a whole, but in the small parts, we're going to, people have already started mentioning some things that they notice, um, some things that they see. Jim, is there anything that you see that you think is worth noting? Sure, I'll echo a few of the things that were said in the um, in the chat, but then some things I noticed too. So in starting with the figure that you drew our attention to at first, who's separated from the rest, I noticed this, this figure. Um, it looks to me like a, a baseball player, um, but but because of the way that um, he's standing, I'm assuming it's a male, the way he's standing, that he looks a little hunched over and maybe a little bit older. Um, so it makes me, again, it makes me wonder um, what's going on here, what's the occasion. Um, and then I notice, and I notice it's kind of old fashioned because of the, like the knicker type pants they have. The baseball players don't wear those anymore. So my brother was a huge baseball fan when I was a kid. And so it just reminds me of some of the, the pictures and um, cards that he had um, when, when I was growing up. Um, so, I, so I recognize that. Um, and then the, the group to the right, they, I noticed that um, the players seem to have their um, caps off and to their chest. So it makes me think about maybe the national anthems playing or something like that. And then there are these uh, men in civilian clothes, but some of them, the ones to the far right have, um, long, uh, one has a long coat on. So it makes me think it might be a little bit chilly. So it makes me think about where this might be, if it's baseball season, where this might be taking place. I see men with cameras, again, old fashioned cameras with a big flash um, there, that kind of thing. And the dress looks, um, again, very dated compared to today. And then I saw lots of banners. I couldn't make out the words on them just because I think my eyesight is not so great. But some people were seeing um, 1923 and World, World Series champions and that kind of thing. So it gave us a sense of context there. And then lots of people in the stand. <laughs> yeah. Well, I actually thought it was really interesting. The man in the foreground who is wearing a, a player's uniform and then the other players they do have some similarities, but I did think it was interesting that they're under their long sleeves are different. So the players um, that are all lined up are wearing black or well, appears black in the photo right. at least, under long sleeve shirts. Right. And this player in the foreground is wearing white, which right. made me curious right. about why that why that might be. So yeah. and there's one guy who looks like he's not even wearing any undershirt. Um, <laughs> yeah. maybe to the to the end. Yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we've already started to really notice some things and we've done a good job of looking at the details and really trying to discern um, what we see so far. And so we're gonna take a look at one more image up close. So this last image we're gonna take in as a whole. So we don't have quite the background that we did before, not as much detail, but we can still try to think about setting as we're looking at the image as a whole. So we're still gonna pay attention to both the foreground and then the people in the background. And then we're gonna go ahead and focus in about what we see. So sometimes images can seem familiar to us, and so that can make it harder to do some discerning, but I think we can still focus on some details, some noticings, even like specifics of what left versus right, different uniforms, different specific details on individuals' clothing. So now that we've really had a chance to look pretty closely at this image, Jim, are there some things that you notice? Sure, I was noticing um, just the contrast between the three men who are ele elevated on this podium versus the two men who are in the foreground. They're in sort of, again, suits, they're more formal, um, civilian dress, whereas the three men are in athletic, what looks like athletic garb. Um, the two men to the right, have um, with, who have the arms raised have on uniforms that are similar, whereas the one in the front um, has a slightly different uniform, although they all look like track suits. And I see athletic shoes certainly on the one in the front when I, because I can see him in full. Um, I'm curious about the way the arms are raised. Both have um, 
look like they have gloves on and they have their arms raised, but the one in the middle has his right arm raised and he's holding something in his left arm. And the one on the right has his um, left arm raised and his other arm is, is hanging to his side. And somebody noticed that they have um, ribbons and a medal, maybe Olympic medals hung around their necks. Um, and again, that background, there's that stripe that's in that background. So it maybe looks like a field or something like that um, that's, that's in the background. I was, I was also noticing like you were about this footwear and I thought it was interesting because the man who's standing on the top, um, mm -hmm. it almost looks like he's just wearing socks. I'm not altogether mm -hmm. sure, but mm -hmm. it, <laughs> it, right. it's certainly not the Adidas shoes that we see the, right. <laughs> the second place runner um, wearing. So right. it's pretty, maybe kind of curious about that a bit, but certainly we can see the details. And you, I think even as you zoom in, you can see the, um, person on the top pillars uniform, like the words or the letters that are on their uniform. Right, right. And the two men um, who have their arms raised um, look African American to me. I see the USA there on the thing, so they look African American, whereas the one um, to the left looks um, Caucasian. So a, a contrast in race there. And the two men in the front certainly look Caucasian as well. And several people in the chat seem like they're noticing um, the facial gestures of the, so certain people looking straight up heads. Mm -hmm. And then um, some people are looking down. Right. That's really something to notice as well. Right. So now that we've looked at all three of these images separately, the real fun begins because we're going to look at these images together. Um, <laughs> And so this is a part where we're really going to push ourselves. So we've done some seeing already, but now we're really going to push ourselves into both the wonder and connect. So we'll start with some wonderings. It can be about a particular image, but it also can be about um, the images together. But I'm wondering if people have questions that have either changed or maybe are still the same after looking at these separately. How about you, Jim? Is there something you're really wondering about? Yeah, so, so I'm wondering about why these three pieces are together. And I'm, I'm sensing some, con I'm seeing some general connections, but I'm just, I'm curious about why they're put together. Um, I'm, I'm curious about um, what's going on in that um, photograph on the left um, and why the um, individuals set apart. And I'm wondering about maybe I'm wondering about in individuality, and you know I see sports as a as a as a theme almost connecting them. But uh, so I'm wondering about individuality because we have the solitary vest, we have the solitary figure, and then we have the um, but then we have the the three people on the podium, but two with their fists raised, but one is higher than the other. So I'm I, it, it, raising all kinds of questions about um, what what is going on in each of these and how they connect. In the chat, we see, sorry, I was just going to share. That's okay. In the chat, we see um, Ashley's curious about eras. Um, Dr. Ward says is curious if all three represent a special event. Um, and Tess wondering is, uh, who the vest belongs to. So we see people in the other ones and then just an object. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, another really interesting question we can pose at this time about the wonderings can also, and somebody brought it up in one of the a chat when we were looking closely, was also about being able to interview the pho photographer of the time. What questions might I ask the person um, about, the, about their photo? Um, which is a really great question because we have two photos here um, about what, what kind of questions we could ask them. Mm -hmm. Mary Beth is wondering about how the vest connects and maybe how we honor showcase sporting events and celebrations. You know, um, one thing that I'm thinking about Ellen too is uh, between the, the photograph on the left and then the bottom one on the right, they're both um, at moments when, so for example, the national anthem might be playing or at some reverent moment where the heads are bowed and that kind of thing. So it's interesting um, that there's that kind of connection between those two photographs we see. Yeah, I think it's really interesting that um, identity and sports are really seems like it's a pretty prevalent thing for people in the chat as far as what they're wondering about, but also identifying as things that connect. Mm -hmm. Another thing we can think about as we move into the connections, and it seems like the two photos are striking a more uh, an easier connection. 
So one of the questions that we really can ask that Jim kind of already asked, which is this idea of why do they, we think that they could be all together. And we did notice some things about the vest in, a, in and of itself that might help us connect either to one or two of the other photos. I'm remembering that when we looked at the vest, we saw something that said Special Olympics and um, the photo of the runners makes me think that that's also at the Olympics. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking about the pins as being, uh, as many of them seem to be commemorating a, a special event or certainly a lot of them are connected to athletics, but not all of them. Um, but that, that idea of a special moment in, um, in, in time and in maybe sports history or something like that. Certainly, I think the other two are clearly that. And then the vest is more of a, um, a, a way of commemorating those things, you know, the idea of commemorative pins and that kind of thing. Somebody had mentioned earlier, it reminded them of like National History Day and how kids trade pins um, from, from states and where they're from and the idea that maybe this is someone who's been trading pins or collecting pins, that kind of thing. Stephanie's suggesting the vest links sports and place with the flag and pins of different states. I mean, I think that's a kind of, the setting is kind of an interesting thing to really wonder and make connections across this idea um, of setting and where this places us. Um, some people also decided that the Special Olympics and then um, they feel like the photo at the bottom is the Olympics as well, that there's Olympic connection there as well. So I definitely think it seems like we're able to connect them um, in certain ways. And it seems like identity. I, there were some people that were also talking about this idea of individual versus group um, sports. And certainly baseball kind of runs both, right? Mm -hmm. um, individual players have important parts, but they're also part of a team. Um, and certainly in the Olympics, that's the case as well. They work together, um, but have individual importance. So commemoration seems to be a big one for most people. Yeah. So what's interesting about this now that we've looked at them together is I wonder whether people could reflect just a bit about how they might have new ideas now that they've looked at these things all together rather than individually and how that might have changed what you thought or pushed your thinking or wondering. Um, Phoebe was wondering, because we see the photographers depicted in two photos, she's wonders what the photographs they took of these moments look like and how their perspectives might be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that raises some interesting questions for me too about um, are, are these official photographs or are they, um, are they captured by someone who's, who's not an official photographer? Because yeah, we have, as Phoebe noted, we have the official photographers perhaps in the, in the picture um, but yet, who took these um, photographs and were they, um, I mean, they're both like nicely framed. So I'm, I'm guessing that somebody with, you know, a photographic background, you know, somebody, maybe a professional, but I'm wondering if they were part of the official um, team that was supposed to be photographing this. Yeah, and Vicky also notes, makes her wonder how we honor and recognize events and people who are important. And then Ashley has in the chat, athletes as heroes on and off the field. Mm. Mm. So what's neat about this routine is it really, there aren't, a, there aren't particular exact answers and it certainly has made us more curious about each one of these items individually, but also really at the heart of why are they together? Um, which is a, a great reason why using multiple images can actually um, push, students and, and actually adults thinking about something. I know you all in past um, Easy Peasy have done See Think Wonder, which is done often with a singular image. So it was interesting to do this one with multiple um, and see what people had to say. So 
So Dr. Laura Ward is noting that her thinking has shifted from the subjects in the photo to the photographers. And I think that connects to some other comments we've seen about who's honored in sports and this idea of identity. So it's identity of who's in the images, but also the identity of people you may sometimes not remember. Ellen, do you want to give us some information um, sure. about it at this point? Absolutely. So what's interesting about all three of these items um, is that all three of these items have quite a bit of detail in the info button on each of the items. So the vest is, was actually worn by Marty Sheets, who is a very famous Special Olympian. He actually appears in Eunice Kennedy Shriver's portrait that we have at the Portrait Gallery at the Smithsonian. Um, he... I think he participated for 40 years in the Special Olympics, um, which is why he has so many pins. And um, it is pretty interesting because the Smithsonian has several resource, um, several different items of Marty's on um, the digital resources. So you can actually find many. But um, his he participated in quite a few sports, which is why we saw the heavy um, – heavyweight lifting and golf and swimming and things like that um, because he participated in so many. Um, he says golf was his favorite. So that's why you see the PGA and some other things. Um, the second image was in fact Babe Ruth. Several people remembered. <laughs> He's a pretty iconic figure and lots of people know that, um, that he was number three. But what is interesting is this photo was taken as his final visit to Yankee Stadium in 1948. And his jersey was being retired, which is which is why um, he's there in the center. Um, what is interesting is that he was very ill at the time um, with throat cancer. And so they actually really had to help him into his uniform, and which is why he's leaning on the baseball bat. Hmm. And um, But, Jim, you noticed how many people were there. And they said there were 49,641 standing and applauding at the time. But what's interesting is um, they were talking about this person was a, attending, but they weren't necessarily like just part of the regular photography group. And so they know he was able to be in the locker room and saw the struggle that Babe Ruth had. So he decided to take a photo from behind, hmm. um, which I think is a really gets to what people were talking about as far as photographer's choice and really what their perspective is. And then our last image <clears throat> A lot, several people I think recognized it because it's pretty iconic, which is, it comes from the 1968 Olympics. And Tommy Smith had won gold in the 200 meter sprint in the Mexico City Games. And so this is about um, when they were getting their medals, both he and John Carlos who won the bronze decided to um, raised their hands for human rights and, and used um, the black power salute as their way of doing that. Um, when I've used this item with my students, they were really curious about the other athlete. Um, and so they had a lot of questions about Peter Norman. And so in a collection I've made, there's a link to interviews with Peter Norman because he actually was an, Aust he was the Australian runner who came in and got silver. And he actually was the one that talked to Tommy Smith and, John Carlos, because John Carlos forgot his glove. And so they they had planned that if they won, they were going to do this. And he said, well, just split your gloves. And that's actually why one is wearing a left glove and one is wearing a right glove, because oh. it was just one pair. Um, so it's a really interesting interview, um, but definitely worth seeing. Um, but it's certainly, I mean, the best part about this routine for me is that it makes us really interested in three really cool items, but also a lot not everyone had read all these wonderful things that I just mentioned, but a lot of what we talked about was very focused on this idea of identity perspective. Um, so it was really fun to engage with this today. <laughs> We're going to invite Ashley back, who's going to just tell us a little bit about the Learning Lab and this particular collection and others that she's uh, she's helped create.
Absolutely. Thanks so much, uh, Ellen and Jim and Allison. It's been great to kind of watch people comment in the chat. Um, I wanted to mention that this session will actually be archived at the same URL. So you can come back and watch it, share it with a friend, um, fast forward to all your, your favorite parts. Um, but I also wanted to mention that the resources that we've shared in today's session are also available. Um, and they are linked in the YouTube description um, and also searchable by searching easy peasy, um, the, the word easy and then the uh, the letters PZ um, in the Smithsonian Learning Lab. And so this collection here um, provides you a short description as well as the specific routine that we just went through, which was see, wonder, compare. It also provides additional information for the teacher to start to think about um, each of the kinds of thinking that we're um, encouraging with this type of routine. It also includes all three of the artifacts um, and photographs, as well as them combined into one image. Additional context about Project Zero thinking routines, additional context about the specific routine itself, and then some lessons that might be of interest if you're interested in kind of the theme of sports heroes. Um, Ellen has actually been doing an amazing job while people are starting to do distance learning um, at home um, with their families. So she has actually curated um, a collection a day for her students based on their interests. And families are able to explore those collections and have great conversations um, all about those collections, just like we did here. Um, I should mention one of them is about the Olympics. Um, there's also um, a collection that was created by another Project Zero practitioner, a teacher practitioner in Pittsburgh, um, looking at Roberto Clemente. And then also, finally, one of my colleagues, Philippa Rappaport, created a collection looking at uh, Latino history, uh, Latino family story um, in baseball. And so you can explore that here. And like I said, the webinar will be archived so you can review it here. And there's additional courses offered by Harvard's Project Zero that you can check out if you're interested in learning more. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Allison to close us off for the rest of the day. Sure. One thing I just wanted to point out, I thought Cheryl had a really great comment that she said this routine would work seamlessly with learners interrogating peer created collections of images from our present quarantine experience. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure that, that everyone saw that comment. Um, so I want to thank everyone for joining us. We um, always, always appreciate your participation as we go through these routines and your comments and your feedback and your thoughts about how you might use these with your students and your children at home, if you're the caregivers. We will be back with Ellen and Jim on Wednesday, modeling another routine, and we hope to see you here at one o'clock. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.